Have you ever wondered how some of the greatest billionaires in history managed to build unimaginable fortunes, even starting with very little? There's a pattern they all follow, and John D. Rockefeller, the first billionaire in history, knew this secret. Instead of avoiding debt, he used it strategically. Instead of cutting corners, he invested in innovation, and these seemingly risky choices put him light years ahead of his competitors. If you want to discover the skills Rockefeller used to turn every decision into a step towards wealth, stick with me until the end of this video. Today, I'll show you how to apply these lessons to your life and transform your financial future. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to receive new videos and never miss any content. Let's get started. John Rockefeller was the world's first billionaire in dollars. He contributed $2,000 to the startup capital of his first business, and of that, $1,200 were borrowed from his father. By the time he passed away in 1937, Rockefeller's fortune was estimated at $1.4 billion. In today's terms, that would be equivalent to $318 billion. For comparison, the fortune of the world's richest man, Elon Musk, is estimated at just $219 billion. When studying John Rockefeller's biography in more detail, I realized that the secret to his financial success lies in just a few money management skills. And while you give this video a like, I'll reveal the essence of those skills. Managing money. At seven years old, Rockefeller earned his first money working at a neighbor's farm, where he helped harvest potatoes and raise rabbits. Following his mother's advice, he made his first entry in a ledger, recording every last cent how much he received, and how he spent it. These records, which can be compared to modern cash flow statements, were fundamental tools for him to track his finances throughout his life. And John lived until the age of 97. Rockefeller's biographers often mention that he grew up in a low-income family. There isn't precise information on how much his father earned, but we know he was a traveling salesman who spent a lot of time away. During these absences, Rockefeller's mother had to be frugal which led her to develop a strict financial discipline, a habit she passed on to her children. From an early age, John understood how crucial money management was to multiplying wealth. Although his parents wanted him to go to university, Rockefeller chose a technical business course and accounting classes. After his studies, he landed a job as an accounting assistant, and his talent with numbers was quickly recognized by his superiors. While other colleagues avoided dealing with closing tasks and audits, Rockefeller stood out and showed genuine enthusiasm for those activities. His starting salary was $17 a month, but by the second month, it rose to $25, and a year later, he was promoted to manager with an annual salary of $800. This demonstrates John's strong commitment to financial education and how that knowledge became the foundation of his future wealth. That's why it's crucial to pay attention to your own financial education. Don't be afraid to borrow. Entrepreneurs often see borrowed money as a necessary evil to be avoided, but Rockefeller's example shows it doesn't have to be that way. If Rockefeller hadn't borrowed the amount he needed to go into business with his father, he probably would have spent his entire life working as an employee. Borrowed funds were a constant companion in Rockefeller's business ventures. He preferred to sell shares to the next investor, even when he had enough of his own funds, he also invested his own money but kept it as a reserve, and even if there were no investors, he would finance the next project on his own. Rockefeller's first business was a small logistics company. In its first year, Rockefeller handled orders worth half a million dollars, but funds quickly became scarce. Already owing a substantial amount to his father, who had not only loaned him money but at 10% interest per year, Rockefeller took whatever amounts he could find. It wasn't easy, but he pulled through. It's often said that only financially illiterate people aren't afraid of borrowing, but the difference between them and Rockefeller was that he borrowed wisely. Meeting Obligations Rockefeller was always diligent about meeting his obligations, including financial ones. No matter how challenging it was, and he faced many difficulties in the early years of business, he always found the right amount at the right time. In his memoir, How I Made $500 Million, Rockefeller recalls how his father came to his office for another loan payment at the most inconvenient time and insisted on needing the money immediately. 
Rockefeller himself couldn't tell if this happened by coincidence or if his father chose these dates intentionally for educational purposes. Regardless, every creditor, including his own father, received exactly what they were owed when they were owed it. Over time, bankers came to trust Rockefeller's word, opening their vaults to him without hesitation. His reputation in financial matters became his best guarantee. Therefore, you should always carefully monitor your credit history and financial reputation. Every decision has a cost. Rockefeller could borrow money without fear and fulfill his obligations because he never made random decisions. Every step was meticulously calculated in advance. When taking out a loan, he always considered when and how much he would have to repay, how he would make the repayment, and what profit he would generate from the borrowed funds. If he was investing his own money, he also planned when and how he would multiply that capital. Rockefeller invested millions of dollars into his companies when the investment led to increased production or reduced costs, which translated into higher profits. He didn't miss opportunities. He was the first in the United States to replace the transportation of oil in wooden barrels by horse-drawn carts with the use of tank cars on trains, making the process more efficient and widespread. Additionally, he decided to invest in refinery safety after noticing the financial losses caused by frequent fires. At that time, refineries were hastily built, resembling sheds, and many in the industry believed that oil was a temporary venture, so they saw no point in investing in infrastructure. When Rockefeller began exporting oil, he needed equipment to quickly transfer oil from tanks to ships. He personally equipped the necessary railway stations, offering them to the railroad company at no cost. However, besides increasing the volume of transported oil, this strategy became a negotiating point to reduce tariffs, allowing Rockefeller to cut transportation costs to one-third of his competitors' costs. Beyond the oil industry, Rockefeller also owned several iron mines. When he realized that transporting ore by ships would be more profitable than by trains, he built his own fleet. His partners saw these innovations as too risky and hesitated to invest. In these situations, he would say, All right, I'll invest alone, but all the profits will be mine. This statement quickly changed his partner's stance because everyone knew that if Rockefeller was willing to take the risk, profit was almost guaranteed. The concept of wealth. There are timeless truths in the world of finance that have enriched many people over the years. That's exactly what John Rockefeller's financial skills represent. Their simplicity and accessibility might intimidate most of you, but those who find the strength within themselves and manage them properly will quickly achieve their personal financial goals. That's it for today's video. I hope these valuable insights from Rockefeller can inspire you and help you progress in your journey towards a financial life as grand as his. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.